Okay, it's two o'clock. Um, let me introduce the person who needs no introduction, Adela Gott, who is the uh, Blackboard coordinator and uh, just a wonderful teacher. So she's going to walk us through the navigation bar, teach us all about you know, spots on the bar we maybe didn't know anything about. Adela, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. <clears throat> and I'm the Blackboard administrator. So. Is that what I said? No. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. No, that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna share my, uh, this will probably be another short class. Um, so uh, we can certainly stay and answer more questions that you have like we did yesterday. Um, so our, I'm sure you're all very familiar with the template and the navigation that comes with, um, with every class that you have. Um, have you ever heard that old saying that a camel is a horse that was designed by a committee? So this template in Blackboard is the instructional technology camel. I'm going to share my screen with you. So here we are, we're looking at another blank class. This is how your class looks the first time you see it. And uh, the navigation is this, uh, all these links that run along the left side. So um, we, this was ne we were never meant, uh, were never meant for you all to uh, keep everything that's in it. Um, it's just a template. It's completely customizable. Um, if you were here yesterday, I mentioned some links that already have content in them. So I want to talk about why they have content in them. Um, do you know what the letters CYA mean? Yes? Okay. So some things are there just for that. Um, let me show you, does everyone know what the student preview is? So there's this long list of links here and in the student preview, it narrows it down to a much shorter list. Um, by default, some things in this list are already hidden, like about your instructor, by default it's hidden, the instructor doesn't have to um, put anything about themselves. We included the link because it's highly recommended for you to do that, especially now that, um, that you're completely on online. Um, also, what's new? This is a weird little page. Um, it's not really helpful. I think they only keep it there for sentimental reasons. Um, so by default, that one's all also hidden. Um, these other links that you see that have a box next to them, that means just by clicking on the box, um, you can hide it. And this little box, when there's a line through it, that means it's hidden. Um, this little button that's next to every link is called an action button and you, you see them all over Blackboard. And when it comes to these links, there are certain things that you can do with them. You can rename it, you can hide it, uh, you can deny guests, we don't really have guests or observers, or you can just delete the link. Now, if you accidentally delete a link that you've already put stuff in, um, you would have to call me to help you get it back. Under orientation, we have this start here button and it's got important things in it. Um, right here, this getting started module is hidden. Um, this, isn't some, this is something that you would have to fill out for your class if you wanted them to have it. Um, there's instructions here. 
you can put in a welcome, describe your course, um, include this uh, course structure. This is just something if you wanted to go into that detail and have that kind of detail available for your students. There's a Blackboard student orientation that I, all of the, everything in start here, you should at some point, hopefully on the first day, point out to your students so they'll know, uh, so they'll know that this help is available. This Blackboard orientation can, uh, can includes instructions and videos on basic things they need to know to participate uh, in their class. And um, I would recommend if you're still consider yourself new to Blackboard to go through this page and just at least view the videos. They're rarely over three minutes. So the Blackboard student uh, orientation is, uh, it's really important for them to know that it's there. Um, there's a Blackboard support and technical requirements that tells them what they have to have. Um, in browsers for PC or Mac, uh, we do really have to insist that only these two browsers are used. And also, I'm seriously thinking about putting a line, an X through Chrome because Chrome recently updated to version 80. And since they have passed version 80, Blackboard has issued some uh, reports that uh, this new up upgrade in Chrome is causing problems with uh, logging in with cookies. Um, and uh, that's one of the reasons uh, we're switching from Blackboard because it, it just has a lot of problems. I, no one has ever had a problem in Firefox. So uh, maybe if you really, if you've got all your stuff in Chrome, just use Firefox for, for Blackboard. There's also a link and the phone number for the help desk. So <coughs> everyone should know where that is. And there's also this little item that's called What Next? And this is uh, available in a lot of the links and that's just help to go to where your student should visit next. Um, in the syllabus and outline, there are these, uh, uh, this folder and these two items. And the reason we put them in your syllabus and outline is so that for <coughs> students are going to go at some point, hopefully a couple of times, visit their syllabus and outline, and they'll see that these links are there. Um, the student disability services statement, um, in case you don't know this icon, this means it's a web link, and it just takes them to, to our website uh, so they can, so they can see what the, what the policy is. In this folder, this has got links to policies for all the different schools. The undergraduate uh, student, students and all the, the medical schools because they have very different policies. This first item right here is basically just telling the students that if they need any information, they, there's this link in the UIW course policy, uh, course policies, guidelines, and accommodations. And um, uh, this particular link, um, the provost insisted that it had to be available in Blackboard. And it had to have all the words. So that really threw off my Blackboard layout. But what can I do? Um, in About Your Instructor, um, we really recommend that you put um, like Annette said on Wednesday, um, just a few uh, things about yourself, a picture of yourself, you know, some, you know, personal things that you would even mention if you were in class, just because your students uh, may not see you or speak to you um, for, the, for the whole semester. And so this is in a section called orientation. Here in course materials, all of these links are blank. This is where you would put 
um, your uh, your weekly um, folders or modules that you want your students uh, to visit every week. And then if you're not going to put assignments or course documents in this weekly or unit folder, um, you have links, uh, space to put them in here. But you can, if you want to, you can always hide that link just by clicking the action button and choosing hide link. So you'll see now it's got um, a line through it. So that means it's it's hidden. And same thing with course documents. Um, some people like to keep their assignments separate or in you know in one click a one click space. Uh, other instructors like to have a folder with everything you're going to do during that week in there. Same thing with course documents. Um, there may see, be some course documents that apply to that don't apply to one week. They just need to be available for students. But you can also hide that um, if you want to. Um, you can also call it something else. If you need a space for some other, like uh, maybe you've got a bunch of websites that you want your students to visit, you can change this to um, and call it uh, web links. So it's easy, since these are blank spaces, it's easy to just uh, rename it to something that is useful to you. The next section is course tools, and that's where they'll find their gradebook and their email. Um, it's probably a good uh, idea to explain how the email works. Um, you can, uh, students have this uh, email too, so they can uh, send something to all of their uh, uh, classmates, for instance, if they're missing something or they miss something in course or they just need to ask about notes or something. Um, it's super handy to have, to be able to email all of your students at once. Um, the plagiarism checker, not a lot of people use it, so by default it is uh, hidden. Um, the Zoom button we have discovered, especially after Annette's um, presentation on Wednesday, that it might be good to rename this office hours. If you're not going to have um, synchronous uh, class meetings, you should at least uh, have um, some day of the week or an hour somewhere to, that where you can meet synchronously with your students. Um, there's some other links here that are uh, lecture capture for health schools only, your eval. Um, this other, under resources, this link by default is hidden. And that one's hidden because it's really just uh, things that are there to help you. Um, there are is uh, all these different talks, topics. It's a lot of stuff. Um, for instance, under creating announcements, there's just some sample announcements here for um, what you should include when you want to write your first, uh, your welcome announcement to your students and how to create an announcement. So um, here's creating a faculty introduction. You could use that as a, um, a guide to what you would put on that about my inst uh, your instructor page. So these are all just things that are helpful for you um, to use or not to use. Uh, creating rubrics, um, you creating and developing groups. Um, those two are really important. There's a student agreement quiz. And you will find that under, it's a uh, part of the templates. There are these two student agreements that you may, um, that's kind of a quality matters thing that's recommended. All it is, is uh, a little quiz. You can, it can be for points or no points at all. And that just is where the student will declare 
that they're going to pay attention, they're going to follow the rules, they're going to do the work. Um, you know, so, sometimes having a, you know, doing it formally like that make, uh, makes a student feel more responsible. You know, they realize that they're, even though it's on, online, they're, they're responsible for it. So the, ter the test is there to deploy if you, if you want to. Um, you know, another, um, another recommendation is to have a little zero points or very low stakes quiz on your syllabus so that you can make sure that they have read through their syllabus. Um, that can be a first, uh, first homework assignment um, um, just so that no one can say they didn't know uh, what was in the syllabus. Um, these two last links are for everybody. Um, links, they're links to the library and to, um, uh, to the help desk support page um, on the website so that they can just, you know, with a click, get to the, the help desk service request form. So um, I know there are some of you that uh, uh, have personalized or you'll hide everything but the units and weeks modules, um, but Really, it's, it can be as flexible as you, want, as you want it to be. If you are going to add something, there's this little plus sign in the top right of the navigation bar. That is how you would add um, a link. So a uh, module page, it's just, I won't even go there. A blank page would be a link when you click on it. It's just a blank space. You can put anything you want there. Um, a tool link, you would name it if you wanted to have a link in your, um, in your menu that went to um, Cengage or to Pearson, something uh, that, that some tool that you're using in your course that you want them to go without having to go into the week, the weekly folder and find it and click on it. If you're going to use it a lot, you can put it there. The only tools that you can add are things that are available in here. Um, most of these are uh, content, content areas. And a content area, for instance, this units, weeks, and modules is a content area. And that's just a link to some place where you can add folders, um, um, assignments, anything you, you can put anything you want. So um, let's say you have used up, you're using all of the links that came with the template. This is where you would go to add another link and then check the box. By default, it will be hidden, but you can check the box here when you, um, when you create it. And that, just, that will just give you a place for content. So that'll give you another blank space, just like units, weeks, and modules. Also, the reason this is called units, weeks, and modules is because uh, we were expecting for you to rename it to whatever increments you have your class divided up in. So if you use units or weeks, you can change it to, you can change it to chapters if you want. Um, any questions so far? Let's see if there's anything. Oh, someone asked, Michael Moon asked, which, uh, which link I changed to office hours. That was the Zoom link. So for office hours, student would click it and then go to your Zoom meeting. You might want to call it something else like um, classroom or I don't know if anyone's going to have synchronous courses in the fall.
So another thing, by default, um, the home page for your course is announcements. So, you know, as soon as people come in there on their announcements, um, that's something that is also frequently changed by instructors because um, since announcements are sent as emails to the students anyway, um, if you wanted to, you could change the home page for your uh, course. Maybe you want it to be your uh, the chapters. You just want them to be able to go right into um, their chapter or week link. And the way you do that is here in the control panel. And it's under customization and teaching style. It's called the entry point. So um, you would click here and these are all your content, all the content areas that are in there. Um, let's say I want to choose, well, where's my chapters? So let's say I went out, came back in, and instead of going to, um, to announcements, it goes to your syllabus and outline page. Not sure why my chapters are not there. Hmm. Well, now I want it to open up to my chapters. I want to figure out why it's not doing that. Maybe it's a course link. Yes, it is a course link. So I didn't actually explain what a course link is. It's another option when you add a link in your, uh, to the navigation. And it's just what it sounds like. It's a place where you can um, take them like directly to their tests or directly somewhere, I don't know where you'd wanna go. It's, it's just an option. But this gives you the uh, the option of looking at everything in there that, that you have in their course. So if you ever see this box, it pops up for a couple of things. This is all it is. It's just a place to select every single thing that's in your course. So I'm just going to change this back to announcements because it's not working. Does anyone want it, want their homepage to be something else? I know Dr. Tech had uh, changed it from announcements to, he, go, he sends them directly into their uh, weekly assignment. Um, StudyMate and SoftChalk are two tools that we have a license to. Um, there are, there's training for that at other times. So um, it, does anyone have any questions? Adela, we have a question about office hours and how they work. Oh, well, office hours is just a Zoom meeting. So um, you would have to let your students know that you know, every Sunday from four to five central time, you will be available for office hours. It's, it's just a Zoom link that's uh, tied to your course. 
So that's why uh, we ju I just changed Zoom to, um, to office hours because, um, you know, a lot of people thought they were going to meet synchronously at their regular class time with their students and ended up uh, not doing any synchronous teaching at all. Adela, look in the chat. Michael Talon had some issues with it on a previous semester. Yeah. So, um, Michael, uh, when, when was that in the semester? Because a whole bunch of things in Zoom changed. Like in April and May. Is Michael still here? Anyway, so this is what happens. Only the instructor can start the meeting. Um, I'm the only instructor in here, so as soon as I click join meeting, the meeting starts. And thereafter, any students that, uh, that click on that Zoom meeting will come into, will, will, come, will join the meeting that I have started. Only the instructor can do it. Uh, can start the meeting. Um, the, 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 the meeting ID is tied to the, the class. So uh, your class will have the same meeting ID for the whole semester. Um, you don't have to use the Zoom link at all. If you want to have weekly meetings, you can just send an announcement uh, create a, a, a schedule a Zoom meeting and send your students an announcement with the meeting link in it. So, really? this, yes, related sir? to that, oh, you just cut about, out about a, a room, a waiting room that students, if we went on Zoom from July something or other, there would have to be a waiting room and there right. would have to be Right, and yeah. that's, that was, uh, that's because of the security issue. Um, all that means is that when your students come into the meeting, you'll see them in a list that they're waiting to be allowed in and you just click a button to, to allow students in. So it, it's just for security to keep for instance, and, and that happens. That's going to happen when we have office hours or chat no, with, it's, it with should, a colleague. It should be happening now. Is is that right, Kathy? So really, what happened was, um, I'll just check. So Zoom, Adela, Adela is correct. Zoom sent out a um, notice, and they just really it's for, it's for security. Um, and they said it would be July 19th. So what we did was we sent out a notice because we didn't want people to be um, taken aback. And what, what they're going to do is they want you to, to enable a meeting room or, or to put a password on your meeting. And if you don't do either of those, um, they'll put a password on your meeting for you. And what we do is we embed the password <laughs> in the link. So really it still works out where you sometimes okay. don't have to use the password. So, but what then is just about, I'm going to say about two minutes after we sent that email out, they changed it. So it's, it's the zoom came in and said, um, it will be in September that they pushed it back from July 19th to like September 27th or something, but we just went ahead and didn't send you another email. So you really have until, um, September before they start doing that. Okay. But I, I think what we can do is we can offer a Zoom session in the next week or, you know, next week or so, or, you know, an additional session to show you about meeting settings and where you do that. And, and, um, and like Adela said, when you go into your Zoom dashboard, which is, has nothing to do with Blackboard, it's in Cardinal Apps, and Billy Conway over here and I are doing this right now for her class. We're setting up the meeting and in, in the, in the zoom dashboard and then she's going to put that link in announcements and that's where her students will go. So, so Billy, and so her students will go to that link every Tuesday and Thursday at nine o'clock and go in and it would be separate from her zoom link that's on the navigation bar. That's a separate meeting. So that could just be used for office hours per se. So that zoom meeting that's on the office, the blackboard um, navigation options, when you open it, it automatically, they click on it and it immediately opens that meeting session for your office hours? It does. Oh, okay. 
as long as as long as the instructor clicks on it, uh, if students try to get in, it it won't start a meeting. So, but as soon as you open it, the students can get in by clicking on that. So, also, yeah, it keeps your whatever settings you make in your Zoom dashboard. Your your course meeting will keep those settings. So if you set it up for a password or um, a waiting room, it'll it'll keep those settings. Okay, in so in, in regards to setting that up, um, do you set it up through the Blackboard that course and no. click on that and then it opens up and allows the instructor to make changes? Or do we set it up under the Zoom app and then do we need to embed the link there? I, I'm a little confused no, at how you no. set it up. That uh, that Zoom link is part of the of the of the our Blackboard template, so that comes with every class, mm -hmm. and every class gets its own meeting ID. So you, as the instructor, whatever when you're in your Zoom account and you uh, make changes to your to your personal settings in the Zoom in your Zoom account it's going to keep those settings. When you, okay. So you don't have to do anything. It, but well, I, click I, on that. Okay, I think I'm not making myself clear. So um, I know that if I log into apps and I click on Zoom, it takes me to my Zoom area where right. I can set up meetings, I can change my personal ID, mm -hmm. um, I, I can do all that. So if I'm scheduling office hours, do I schedule them there and then it automatically links to that Zoom no. link in Blackboard? Or do I have to go into Blackboard, into Zoom, that Zoom tab, click on that link to set up the hours? And then where does it deposit it so I can then access it later? So um, in this link, if your office, it's completely dependent on the instructor clicking on it and starting the meeting. If you want to, you can um, click the edit button on the Zoom meeting and tell them that your when your office hours are. So Adela, let me make sure I understand. So let's say I was gonna have office hours at 10 o'clock every Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. I don't really need to, if I'm going to do it through Blackboard, all I have to do is tell students to click on that Zoom link inside the course at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning, right. but I have to click first, right? right. So you, right. Up, there's no sending a link. Right. This, there's a meeting in this course that's just for the instructor. Um, mm -hmm. Same ID all semester. Um, all you have to do is click on it as the instructor and start it. Okay. You and when I click on and when I click on it as the instructor, then does it bring up the settings page so that I can say like, please record this office hours because let's say that I need to meet with a student and we're going to have a discussion. You know, you know what I mean? It's, or do I set up a private meeting for that? You, that would probably be a private meeting if, um, if it's something sensitive. Okay. Um, so this is only for open office hours. Then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or like general discussion. Okay. Yeah. Adela, if you, yes, um, when if you're setting up the office hours, do you set that up like you do host a meeting? No, you just show up at your office hour and start the meeting. So, okay. like on on uh, on, you can edit the Zoom meeting link to say office hours will be from ten to twelve, Monday and Wednesday. You and can, it goes through automatically then. Yeah. So okay. it, this link is just is only dependent on you clicking clicking it. You don't have to schedule it. Um, just start the meeting and your students. It's twenty four seven. All you have to do is open it up. When I used it a few semesters ago, I don't remember when my office hours were, but they were in the syllabus, and they might I might have had it on the button as well. Uh, I would just click the Zoom link five minutes before our office hours so they'd be open and my little picture would be up in the corner showing that it was it was there and then you know you'd get the little usual chime if somebody was was there. It was very slick I thought. Well I've been I've been sending that email link for my class my synchronous class times but why I could just do that. I didn't even know that it, I could just have them click on that Zoom link then for synchronous class. 
Right. Some people do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some, it's, it's uh, more secure if you uh, schedule a, a time and send out a link because this will have the same, the same ID link for every class, every time you click it for the whole semester. And it doesn't record anything either, correct? So like if you're wanting to record the class and post later, it won't record if we use that link. Well, if your settings are set to record every, every meeting, then it's going to follow your settings and it'll, it'll record to the cloud. And, so, and Michael, you can also just hit record too, if yeah. you want. Okay. So I, I guess that's where that's goes back to the, the other question then. So where, where do I find like the recordings? Cause it'll obviously re go to the record the cloud and so if I click that link, I get a different screen than the students do, so I can make some edits. Is that correct? When you're ready to get your recording? Well, yeah, because like, I guess the question is how, because we've got multiple faculty assigned to a course. Mm -hmm. So how does that link know to deposit that like in my Zoom account versus the other faculty Zoom account? Or is there a separate account for that class and how do I access that if I hit record or something like that? I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm oh, just no, trying I, to figure I, out how to access really, the information. That's a really good question about sharing courses, correct? That's a very good question. And I yeah. think I think it's I, I, I think this is something I would want to check on, but I, I believe it might be tied to, um, well, let me check on that, Michael, and we'll get back to you. That's a really good question. Yeah, because we have we have team teaching in pretty much all yeah. of our classes. Yes. And so and so we have multiple faculty listed as instructors, and yes. and then some, sometimes we'll actually add instructors in to to monitor across the level because we're teaching a cohort all together um, mm -hmm. across multiple classes, mm -hmm. and so I, I just I. I think I got in my head the structure of how that link works, but now I'm confused about. No, this. yeah, it, yeah. And I, I, we'll we'll uh, just we'll look for um, the record to the cloud. But I can tell you right now, if you record it to your computer, that would solve that right there. But but I'll find out about record to cloud. Okay. With you. Okay. And Absolutely. and I'll put my cell number in the chat so you can sure. call me if you would like to chat sure. with me. And actually, we have an office hours workshop coming up. We'll address it then too, but I'll still get back to you, Michael. All right, thanks. Uh, Michael, just, just FYI, something Kathy said, record, we've been telling folks to record to computer as a default when you record your sessions uh, because it's easier to find, uh, it's easier to locate the recording and then you have it on your computer. So it has no matter what instructor is in the course, if you go and make a recording of, of those office hour sessions and you record to computer, it's on your computer. It's no place else. Yeah, and I so guess the, the issue with that is a space issue, um, particularly if, you've, if, it's a, if it ends up being a large recording and not all of our, like the laptops that we've gotten have a lot of storage space on them. It, it automatically defaults to recording to the cloud. So the other thing would recommend is once you once you've recorded that done that recording, you can uh, you can save that to uh, your cloud account, and then just create a folder for your cloud account to say, and then move that into that cloud account. Um, like OneDrive. Yeah, in your OneDrive, or or you can move it into a stream or your OneDrive. The one thing is that you should have. I mean, most computers that are out today are one are at a minimum a half a terabyte to a terabyte of storage. Uh, it's that takes a, it's going to take a lot of recordings to wipe out a terabyte of storage. Isn't there a way? Isn't there a way to move it into your um, what's that spot called where all the culture videos go? I mean, that's your own personal space, correct, or is that the course space? Because that's where mine goes. That's where I save it. Not, not anymore. Oh, uh, not anymore. It used, to, it used to be Kaltura space, but um, did that start already, Terry? They're not. Um, they're not going to be uh, stored in Kaltura anymore. Well, it's called I, something else now. It's not. We'll be moving. Kaltura. We'll be working over with with faculty and staff over the next year to kind of uh, transition people from from Kaltura to the cloud or the stream. 
which is another cloud-based system that Microsoft gives us as part of our Office 365 tool set. Um, so, uh, and it also, uh, something that Kaltura doesn't offer is transcription. So it actually, trans uh, if you go to stream, uh, if you move the recording to stream, it transcribes it. So, but that's something that's gonna be ongoing through, through now, through probably the first of the year, where we'll get everybody on top of how to do it. We actually have all the tutorials and help sheets ready for that. Um, and they're, act uh, they're being posted to our uh, video page in, uh, on the website. But again, we'll be transitioning away from Kaltura over the next year. Adela, I have a question about um, synchronous teaching. Yes. So I, I first need to go, in, go into Blackboard and then launch Zoom when I'm ready to teach a class, or do I start out in Zoom and then find Blackboard? So um, if you're going to use this link, which you probably are, uh, let me share my screen. Sounds like, yeah, that link you've been talking about sounds like the way to, when, I want, when I'm getting ready to teach a class at the exact time, just go there? Yes. And it'll be ready every, every time for each class. Yes. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, so. There it is, Zoom, right? There it is, right. So you click it and start the meeting. And then when your students come in and click it, uh, they'll, they'll go to that meeting that you started. And there'll be a, a box I can click to record that lecture? Um, you have to set that up in your settings. Okay. So, so it'll, re it'll record every time to the cloud if that's what I want. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah. So you would you would whatever you whatever <clears throat> you um, whatever you choose in the in the settings here in your Zoom um, the, uh, Zoom account that you get to from Cardinal Labs. That's those are the settings that Blackboard will use. So I need to, <clears throat> that setting is going to be done in my Zoom, when I click on Zoom or when I go into Blackboard, I can do it there. No, you can't do it in, you can only open the meeting in Blackboard. So you but, would, what, but to set up the settings, I can do it in Blackboard also? No, you can't, you, you can't access your settings in Blackboard. Okay. You would, you'd have to go to Cardinal Apps. And Zoom, and then, okay. And then Zoom and then, okay. and then fix them there. May I ask you a quick question? Uh, sorry for interrupt you. Uh, actually, I would like to double check only. So for teaching, for lectures, online courses, and the office hours, we are using the same Zoom link, right? But different times. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. I have a question that's about Zoom, not necessarily Blackboard, now that we're talking about Zoom. It's happened to me repeatedly. It actually happened to me this morning. I had a meeting. And it's not an option in my settings when I set up a Zoom meeting that the share screen thing when sometimes it won't come up and let you say share screen with, or let all participants share screen. And I've been in situations where like today, I actually set the meeting up at the person that I was talking to needed to share her screen, but I couldn't get that little thing to come up beside the share screen to let all participants share screen. So I left the meeting. I went into my Zoom account to see about resetting it and it doesn't come up as an option. And sometimes it's not there. And then when I came back in, it worked. But I can't figure out why. See, it's not an option under your Zoom options. But yet it is saying, um, person has not set up sharing option or something, but it won't always let me do it. It's the silliest thing. And it's happened. It's happened. It actually has happened twice in my class time. And, and, it, and it was, you were the host, right? Yes, I, would, I always, I, you know, for my class, I'm the host. And the, at, for today's meeting, I was the host. And it wouldn't let me share my, it wouldn't let me share that ability. So when you went to this little, can you see the share? So when yeah. you went to this I couldn't thing, get that, I couldn't get that thing to come up like that beside it. Was the arrow missing? Yeah, the arrow was missing. It's happened two or three times. Hmm. So um, I've had that happen not so much that or something similar to that happen when I'm in a Zoom meeting where something doesn't quite work uh, and I just exit the meeting and restart it and it solves the problem. Yeah, that's what it I maybe okay. just You know, it, it's probably a glitch in that when the system came up, uh, it loads all of its all of its options and it didn't load the option. 
So if that happens, just close the meeting, end the meeting, let the people know on the other end, I'm going to end the meeting and I'll, I'll be right back. And okay. they can come back in the meeting, it works. Okay, I thought I didn't know something. So <laughs> thank yeah. you. that was a help. Okay, and you know what? One thing that I want to clarify. So back to the navigation. When I was trying to change the entry point to my chapters link, I couldn't get, the chapters link was not available for me to select as, as the entry point, but now it is. So it, it, it just has to, it doesn't have to be a course link, it can be a content link. I think because I went outside of the class and came back in, that's why it finally showed up. It was like res uh, res um, reset, uh, resetting my screen or something. So, oh. what? Adela, I have a Blackboard question. Um, this has been happening a lot to me um, with the Blackboard courses is I go in and I look at the master grade book or I might have a group where I can go in and look at just a select group of students in the grade book. And then once I do that, it won't let me go back to the overall grade book. I have to actually exit Blackboard and, and log back in. And it's happening in like two or three courses. So um, are you using the breadcrumbs to, to get back or, or the back button? No, I'm just using down down on the the tab screen uh -huh. where, where you where the faculty can look at the grade center. Right. So I'll have my group. It will be underneath on the tab to the left. When I have a group set up, I can click on it directly from there, uh -huh. and it'll take me to the view in the grade book where I can see the group. But then if I say see the whole thing using the tab on the left it won't do it and it just gives me the students names and then everything is blank and it won't let me do anything with the grade book until i log out and log back in you have to it, log out i have to log out of blackboard because it won't let me do it and it does it in, across all the courses and are you using chrome no i use uh i either use safari or uh firefox well there goes my firefox is perfect <laughs> I don't, I don't know what that and, and it's only started it recently it, it has never done that this is a new thing that's been going on so I didn't know if Blackboard did an upgrade or something but um, well, it's really that, unusual yeah that's another thing um, Blackboard does an upgrade every month so um, you know things are gonna happen every month <laughs> Okay, so I just didn't know if you've heard that or not yet, but no, that, I, that has started never, happening. I have never heard that. Um, usually uh, things not showing up or um, uh, having blank places, usually that was the cookie issue with um, with Chrome, but I, I had never, I, I, I've never heard that problem before and also um, with Safari or Firefox. Are you, are you, wait, maybe you're not, I don't know, I don't know. I got nothing, sorry. <laughs> you know, if that ever happens, can you take a screenshot, or the next time that happens, take a screenshot of the screen and um, so I can send it to them and ask them if they know what the deal is. Um, sure, I'll do it this weekend because it happens to me every time now. It's not just... Is, is, is anyone, any other instructors in the course that it happens to? Uh, uh, that I says, don't Lisa that. Lockhart put something in the chat. It's happening to her all the time too. Really? So, yep. okay, well, if, if, if you would send me a... And Michael Talon. <laughs> and it, is it just the grade book or it happens with groups? It's, it's only happened to me with Gradebook. I, I don't have any problems with any of the other stuff, but when I get into Gradebook, it just messes up. If you navigate away from the main view at all, and then you come back to the Gradebook, 
Oh, it's just it, so. it, it, it won't show anything, and I have to completely log out of Blackboard and log back in. You can't just change courses. It it because then if you go into another course, it does the same thing. Hmm. All right. Well, send me screenshots and just a little note of what you were doing when it happened, and I'll I'll open the Blackboard ticket. Um. Any other? So it does. It has nothing to do with groups. And Michael, I know you don't have. It's happening in a master class for you, uh, Michael. Wood. And I know Michael Talon doesn't have a master class, so it's just a grade book thing. Dang it! All right. Well, if you would, um, I can open a ticket and and. Uh, I, I, it's and been happening. Eventually, find out what's what's causing that. Adela, there's a question about the, the Zoom link in Blackboard. Do some, of the temp, do some of the templates not have the Zoom link? No, we only have, uh, I'm, I think that perhaps the SPS template doesn't have a Zoom link, but it's in our, it's in our template for everything else. So, um, so it, it's every, every course will have the Zoom link. And perhaps, perhaps SPS does not have it. Yeah, they might not. It's super easy to add. Um, we can revisit this add link. Um, when you add it, it's a content area. I know it. you think it might be a tool link, but Zoom is not in that tool. So you would add um, a content area, name it Zoom link or office hours or whatever you want. Click the box to make it available and submit. And remember, whenever you add anything in Blackboard, it goes to the bottom. So you would have to go and drag it up to, to wherever you want it. But then you have to go in to that content area and actually add the link. And Zoom is under Tools in this uh, Content Action menu. So you would go to Tools and then um, it would be awesome if this was in alphabetical order, but it's not. Higher, there it is. Oh, oh there it is. Ding. So, um, so you name it. You can, if it is going to be for office hours, you can type in here what the office hours are, or if it's um, for class, um, if you're having synchronous meetings. You, you can call it whatever you want. Um, can, can you show us again how you got to that? Okay. So you go uh, click on Zoom link to get into. Okay, Zoom right, right. And, and then, then to tools. And then to tools. Right. And it's. Uh, All right, got it. Got it. You got it. Found it. And uh, by default, it's available, but there is a, an availability button. Permit users to view this content. The, the issue with the office hours, uh, let's say uh, I'm teaching two sections of the same class, and I have office hours before and after the first class. Uh, but the office hours are open for either class group. So, am I am I excluding one, or do I have to uh, do I have to assign office hours for each class for each section? So you're not actually assigning anything. You're just clicking on this button to start a meeting. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's it's not in a schedule anywhere or anything. So uh, so a student in either class can come into that. Yeah. All right. Very good. Adela, if a group of students wants to have a little Zoom meeting, can they use this Zoom link or do they have to go through Cardinal Apps? Um, students can't use it because uh, this uh, course link is, is tied to the instructor. So they, but they can access Zoom through Cardinal Apps? Yes. Okay, so that's the route for them. Would, would they go to Cardinal Apps to start a, uh, a, a discussion 
if you break up the class into four different groups or something like that, the group leader uh, goes into uh, this, uh, the Cardinals apps, gets into Zoom, and then invites the other people in or something. Yeah, they can do it that way. No, Susan? Yeah, you can break your class up into groups through Zoom when you're in it. Yeah, yeah I'd rather use a breakout group for that than. Okay. Can, have you gone through that? And then did I miss it? I came in a little late, so. Oh, no, that's another day. We're going through it. Yeah, that's a different, another day, Susan. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. It's on the agenda. It's coming. All right. Up. Very good. Very good. No problem. No problem. We all our cards today. <laughs> okay. Great. How about how about the issue of attendance? Uh, you know, the, let's say I take attendance at the beginning of the class and then somebody just uh, 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 stops video and then goes off and yeah, like that. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't take it at the beginning, take it at random times. Okay. You can still do that. Mm -hmm. The other thing is to, if, if you record, if you record the meeting, you can't actually go it's like a an MP M, MP4 whatever it is. Yeah. You can't go, you can't go in there and check attendance throughout the the recorded Zoom. I don't think so, right? Um, no, and um, they can be logged in and out of the room. Yeah. Yeah. So. Right. That was actually brought up a good question on Blackboard. I always mark it, but then I can't find it when I mark it. I've when you mark an in within the modules that you want the statistics, like the student goes in there and you know the student's actually been in there and access the data information. But then I'll go to try to find that statistics and I can't find them. Right. Where is that at, the statistics? Um, so you mean for, to see if the student was attending? Well, when you mark, like I always mark um, at, when you set up the, the module of the class, I always mark uh, show statistics or something like that. Because, oh, right, 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 right. But then I don't, I can never find the statistics. <laughs> oh, I, I, I see. Um, They're, like if you had. Um, well, I usually do it under like the module. The uh, module. Yeah, it's statistics tracking. Yeah, right. right there, right there. Let's see. How do you find the results? Um, view statistics report. Where'd you find that? It's on it's on this the action button. So mm -hmm. it's actually on the same place where uh, where you turn it on or off. As soon as you turn it on. Um, it's it's available. There's data available for a report. If it's off, then there's there's you can't generate a report, so it doesn't show up until. I'm gonna go into one of my classes and check that right now because I think sometimes it doesn't. I don't know what it generates. <laughs> Let me real quick, get one of my classes because I always mark it. Do you use that for attend for taking attendance? Use what? The, the, the statistic that... I, I use it to verify that they're actually going, like if a student isn't doing well, and then you know you want to know that, well, you didn't even open all the modules, you didn't even do the... Oh, I see. You didn't even read the material. <laughs> and then you're, you know, you're telling me you're not doing well. So that, I mean, that's why I do it. Uh -huh. But it would be another, if, if that, for especially the undergraduate classes that have, the, you know, we do too the, in the graduate program, where you have to have an attendance requirement the first week of class, and maybe you haven't even met synchronously and you're meeting asynchronously. Well, to me, that statistics button would tell you that they're in attendance because they're in Blackboard, they're, they're engaging in Blackboard. I mean, mm. I treat it. So, do, they, do they have to access a, 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 a document or is in order for that thing to for that to mark? Yeah. Okay. Well, they, they have to access whatever it is. So if a student 
Um, so I, I uh, put it on this uh, web link. So a student would have to click on it to generate any kind of data. So they, they do they have to they have to click on it. Okay. So in, in, in some way you could actually take uh, the usual verbal attendance and then ask them periodically during the class to verify their presence by clicking on something. Right. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Yeah, or wait till, you know, take attendance. Um, yeah, there's, there's different ways, but students are intrepid. They're going to find a way. So here's the problem. I actually, I actually did just go in my course and there is a different place you go to get the statistics that actually does it by name, by person. But when you just click on that content usage statistics for every one of the modules, it oh. brings up a silly page and it just says this report display usage statistics for one content item, including, um, it says last run, Thursday, December the 19th, scheduled, no, I must have pulled up the wrong class course print thing. But it doesn't pull it up by name by student. Oh, I see. Okay. Some way that um, let me try it again. It I I found it one time, and I can't find it again. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna look in the course right now that I'm I have going right okay. now. Okay, and I'm googling um, blackboard statistics. Oh, there's in in all these years, no one has ever asked me about. The statistics report. Yeah, it, <laughs> I, I, I always mark it. I always put it on my thing. And one time I found a list of students and I found who had gone into the thing. And now I can't find it. And um, I'm going to try to find it maybe under assignment. I'm going to go under assignment and try to see if it would do it. But then you, you know they did it because they put it into the Blackboard. I want it for the modules. Yeah, it just says this report displays usage statistics. It just says what it does. Let me see. Maybe I have to. Maybe I have to run it. Maybe that's what I have to do. Is it funny? Oh, it is. Can you share your screen so we can see what you're doing? Um. Yeah. Let me or try. That, it does. Does it have student names on it? No. I'll share it. Can you see that? Oh, it did just run it. Oh, it does at the bottom. It has student names, but it did just run it. Um, so once you go in, can you guys see it? So yeah. once I, I, I'll go back. I'll I'll go back into my modules and I'll pick one. So like like this one, I went in and I went view statistics. You have to then say run it. Oh okay. Once you say run it, it gives you the names and the date and um and what they the if they went in it. So you will be able to see. I won't show the names of my students, but but it did bring up every student name, but I didn't realize that's the problem. I didn't realize that you have to go in and hit that run button. Did you see that? Yeah, I, yeah right. Yeah. And then it brought all this up. So I do think that's worthwhile. I think that's beneficial. Well, okay, Adela, Adela, you remember that so I can call you later. <laughs> I, 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 I'll stop I sharing. Okay, well, it's after three now, so. Um, you're free to go. Class has ended. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Adela. Okay. So much for your time. Kathleen. Kathleen. Oh, yes. Um, could you make sure you send me an email Zoom meeting? Because I I don't usually even know y'all are meeting because I don't oh. get the email. Oh, you so don't, you don't get this? Well, I got this one because uh, Dr. Ford sent it to me okay. and told me, but otherwise I didn't get an invitation. So you're always invited. We'll put you on the list. We'll yeah, put, put me on the list. Yes. I'll, I'll send you the other meeting too. And then the other meeting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Billy, uh, when we send out these invitations, we use what the university calls the dynamic list. It's supposed to be every single faculty member. Do you have another role? No, I I have gotten them before, but like okay. I, the only reason I found out about this one was through Dr. Ford. 
to okay. send it to me. Otherwise, I didn't know, you know, but I have gotten the meetings invitations before, okay. like last so spring, but I haven't got any. Yeah. Thanks. Uh-huh. Okay, bye-bye. Is Teresa Tigeman still on? No. Okay, she had a question about Zoom chats. So I, I'll, have to, I'll have to send her a quick something. Adela, have a good weekend. Oh, you too. Okay. Okay, bye. Okay, see you, bye. Well, wait, I, I gotta look at this one more time, the chat. Okay. See you, Adela. Okay. Bye. Bye.